Hi, I'm Dave Roberts and this is Angling Escapades. Hi there and welcome to Angling Escapades and you join me on the river once again and um, we're here today uh, all about one species really and that's roach. Uh, now we are on the Belmont section of the River Wye as many of you will recognise and although lower down you know into the town there's some more prolific pegs uh, you know in the 90s and what have you and where you know you can catch big big bags of roach uh, and lots of other fish as well. These pegs here I've come in the 40s here and um, these pegs this time of year uh, I just find a very nice pegs to fish and you have a real chance of catching you know targeting roach specifically. Um, the, the, the water here is quite deep and most importantly for me you know most of the success I've had with roach on this river over the years has been all, all about catching roach tight into the bank and these pegs are deep along the bank they're clean and I know I can catch roach here so that's what I've come for today. Now conditions um, the river's been up it's been high it's dropped down it's you know we had a cold spell we've had snow water through it the water temperatures dropped down below four degrees you know it's been hard fishing for a couple of weeks then we've had this warmer weather Weather. we've had a rise and the, I say the river has been been really good and now we're about to get another rise the river is rising as we speak today um, not fast at the moment but I expect it to come more later and then later on this evening I think we've got a storm coming in so really this is about taking a chance while I can you know I said rather the river wasn't rising but it is and also when the river is rising it does lend itself to this tight in fishing so I'm going to do a bit of preparation first, but and, and this is something that I do. I'm not really seeing anyone else do it, but um, it's something that I do uh, on the river here when I'm, you know, if, if if the peg lends itself to it. I want to catch in nice and tight. So what I'm going to do, obviously, is I'll plumb up as tight as I can. But I think people miss a trick on this river. I don't think they realise just how tight in some of these roach sit. So for me, I want to be curb crawling. I want to be down the edge here, and on this peg here, there's like a little bay below it, and as the river comes up. I believe that's where I'll catch fish. They'll be sat in that bay, you know, in the slack of water. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to do a bit of uh, a bit of bank clearing. I'm going to do a bit of gardening like we would do on a commercial fishery, when, you know, when you're clearing your margin. I'm going to do the same on the river here to allow me a clear path down this edge. I'm going to take any anything that's sticking out too far and also any of this, a bit of this grass, take it down a little bit so I can really fish in tight and pull into that bay below me because I really feel as, as conditions change, I'm pretty sure where I'm stood now will be underwater within, you know, an hour or so. And, um, you know, I need to be able to adjust to the conditions and also fish where I believe the fish are going to be happy to sit. So first thing I'm going to do, uh, this is an important thing, I've got a, a stick here which I just found on the bank, I'm going to put this in as a marker and I'm going to put it up on this, this sort of second plateau here. Um, you know, I say this will be underwater pretty soon but I'm just going to put this on this plateau here which is probably about 10 inches above the water level at the moment and then as the river rises I can keep an eye on it and obviously adjust my rigs accordingly and just get an idea of how fast it's rising. It's important to use a long enough stick because there's no point in putting a little stick in that's going to be covered by water within an hour and then you don't know what you're doing. So that's an important part. The second bit is I've got my landing net and I'm just going to go along the bank now and just clear any bits that I think are going to get in my way to you know because I want to fish tight along the edge. So there we go then, quick five minutes, bit of gardening, and what I've done is I've created a nice clean area where I can run a float right down the inside here into this first bit and then there's a, there's a, a sort of a bit of a, 
a step of grass that comes out into the river and then behind that then it comes into a bay down here so I've basically given myself two areas of the peg where I can run down tight maybe catch some fish in tight here if conditions allow but worst case scenario is the river comes up I can get into this bay behind hold a float in tight and hopefully catch some of these roach that live here so what I need to do now is work out what rigs I'm going to use get plumbed up and get fishing before the river gets too messy Plumbing up is quite a, well, it's a very important part of this for me, especially, you know, trying to target these inner margins on the river. So I use big plummets, I use these like, these big Pac-Man one ounces, or I'll use, you know, just big plummets, whatever. I want to really feel the plummet at the bottom. You know, you've got flow and everything that can, you know, give you a false reading almost. So, and what I'm going to do, now I expect here that obviously it's going to be deeper the further out I go, but I'm only interested today it's almost like I've been here before, look at that. So as I come in, it does shallow up, but only by, you know, foot 18 inches. So that's the sort of line there I want to be fishing. That real tight in line there. It's good, that's a good depth there. That's like, that's going to be six foot off the bank. And that's where I'd expect these fish to, to hang. So. I'm just going to just drop that depth down a bit. Yeah, take six inches off there. Because I really, most of the, you know, this, this rig particularly, on a strung out rig, I'm really only going to be running it through. I'm not going to be holding it up much. Just run it through. So I want it on the, you know, tripping the bottom. And then just coming into the, you know, sort of just resting. If I just, just hold it on, just so it's resting against the bank. Bear in mind the river's rising as well, so you've got to make sure your rigs are, are set with it, with the adjustment to, with a view to adjusting. So, again, I'm just going to take a bit more off there. That should take us somewhere near, so it'll just trip bottom as it goes through. And I want to, I want to plumb the depth right here from a keep net right down the peg so what I'll do as well and again this is something I don't see many people doing so I'll actually get up and walk along the bank when I'm playing when I'm plumping up so I can really get a picture if there's any snags down there see that's where that lump of grass is coming to now so I'm, that's going to be the maximum I can go on my first run if it's deeper out in the flow there but what I will be able to do is come in behind it then. so I'll just I'll just walk down the bank if if it's safe enough gonna just drop it in there so it comes in behind this grass I don't know whether you can make that out on the camera but there's a tuft of grass there it's deep in behind there and then it shallows up again there so I've got the same depth in behind this tuft of grass as I've got down here which is what you want you want your rig to always be constant at a constant depth you don't want to be ideally coming up dropping into deeper water coming up onto shallow water and I'm just gonna go the other side of the tree just have a look in this bay because this is where I think as the river worse condi river conditions worsen I think this is where I'm gonna end up fishing so just come in behind the tree and then I'm getting a real building a real good picture of where you know what depths we've got just lower that in there so it should be off bottom there that's it and then it should come into this bay there we go and it's on the bottom there 
think I felt a bit of a snag there. Mm, I have to be careful, there might be some debris down there which we've got to watch out for. Let's come down a bit lower. That's nice there. Yeah, so it's coming into that same depth again. But importantly, this is quite still water here. So I can really hold, hopefully there's no snags down there and I can really hold a bait in tight there. And that's it tangled in the tree. So there we go, just by taking a little walk along the bank with a heavy plummet, you know, I've got a real good idea of the, the layout of the bank, the topography, if that's the right word. That looks nice and it looks steady enough as well. So I feel, having now plumbed up, I can run it down this inside this first bit here and maybe if I'm lucky catch some fish in this first part but worst case scenario I can run it down and tuck it in behind and catch this lower down the bank. Okay so we're all plumbed up, got a rig set up and uh, we're ready to start fishing really. So I'm just gonna take you through, first of all, bait and then rigs. Uh, bait wise, real simple today. Hemp and maggots. Nice, big hemp and some fresh maggots. Now, if I was fishing a match or if I was fishing for other species and fishing out in the flow more, obviously I'd probably have ground bait. And I still would use ground bait for roach anyway in general. But for me, this particular type of fishing, this fishing at close quarters, down the inside, is all about loose feed for me. Um, I have a theory, I don't know whether it's right or not, but it's my theory, is that these, you know, I catch these fish tight to the bank. Now, I don't necessarily believe they live against the bank, um, but I think what happens is when they come into the peg to feed, I think they're like sort of like hanging against the bank and then moving out into the current and taking, intercepting bait. So what I don't want to do is hammer a load of bait into the inside where they might be sitting and sort of disturb them. So I find like ground bait, although it can work, um, it can be a bit risky sort of putting it in that, that close. What I prefer to do really is to sort of feed out in the flow and trickle bait down the inside, just trickle loose feed. Now, earlier on the year, casters are key for me. I love fishing casters. There's no finer roach bait than casters. Um, but you know, we've had a, this river's had snow water in it. The temperature's down, been down below four degrees at times. It's up again now, but it's still not a, a warm river by any stretch of the imagination. So I think just, you know, single maggot, running a single maggot, there's no bleak around or anything like that. I've got no problem with that. So I can fish, you know, a live bait, Single red maggot is probably going to be uh, as good a bait as anything, and I, I can just trickle trickle maggots in, you know, and let them let them just sort of find their way down this inside, and you know, f you know, get get fish used to the, those that trickle of bait, you know, not a big bombardment into their faces, just a trickle of bait to hopefully uh, you know get their confidence up. Um, so obviously with loose feeding, uh, you've got to, your rigs have got to uh, you know have got to be set accordingly. Now um, my uh, over on this river, my favourite rig for roach is just a strung out rig. I, I just think it just scores so well, you know, I, I find uh, roach are just, you know, it doesn't matter what river you're on, we're very, you know, we've got a reputation for, for being very bold on this river and, you know, fishing big hooks and big rigs and catching big weights and what have you, but there's still room for finesse and uh, roach wherever you go, world over, you know, are all about finesse. Uh, so I still like where I can to fish a strung out rig. So what I've set up today is I've set up... Um, I've set up a stick float here. What I love about this uh, this sort of fishing is I can fish short rods. You know, I'm, I've got a 13 foot rod set up here, um, but I could probably get away with an 11 foot rod. It's you know I'm fishing at that close quarters. Um, you know, and I forget that we, we fish a lot of long rods these days, and it's just nice to go back to something you know where where it all started really, or you know something similar. And what I've got on this rig, I've got a stick float rig here. It's it's, a, it's an 11 number six, uh, which I think is equivalent to probably about 10 number fours, nine number fours, 10 number fours, something like that. Um, and as I say, I've got a string of shots. And again, my sort of tapered, all tapered out, you know, close together, all strung out number eights, close together at the top, you know, halfway down the rig, and then slowly spacing out till they're spacing out even further and then you know your, your nearest shot to the hook is about 18 inches away you know there's my hook there's my last shot 
And that, that rig there, the way that falls through the water or the way it reacts when you hold it back, you get a very gentle lifting of the hook bait. You get a very even fall. And, um, you know, that's for, for roach for me, that is key. You know, it's, it's all, you know, anything juddery, you know, and that's what you get with bulk rigs a little bit. You know, when you hold a bulk rig back, you can get that sort of lift against the bulk and the, and the hook bait follows. And, you know, roach don't like that. They like a slow fluttering hook bait. So for me, that strung out tapered rig there, I can just, I'm, all I'm doing with this rig is looking to run it through, um, you know, at the pace of the current rig. Really. I'll check it, I might slow it up, I might hold it back into that bay there or whatever, see how the session progresses. Um, but really, it's just about running this through with your loose feet. Um, so that's my tip for What I've also set up is um, very similar, but on a pole, is I've got a two gram sort of like mini bottle out there. And that's again, number, number eight, close together, same thing, tapered bulk, right down, almost identical to the stick float. It's on a pole, it's on a, a, a slightly lighter float, and um, you know, if I'm lucky enough, if I can get these fish feeding tight in, you know, with this, this is a way, you know, I've got a white hydro elastic, nice soft elastic in there, and if I can get these fish lined up close in, then this is the quickest way to catch them. Uh, it's a lovely way to catch them as well. So I've sort of got two rigs to do the same thing there, um, but one is, is designed for, you know, I can actually fish, it's sometimes easier to fish without a running line just to be able to tuck it in tight. So those are the two rigs for that part of, part of, the, uh, of the swim. I can also run, you know, I'll be running the stick float out in the flow to start with. What I don't want to do is start on this inside. I want to sort of run it just out from the bank, get a trickle of bait going through, running it through, get a thing, hopefully get a few bites, and then all the time I'll be just trickling bait in tight, virtually off my keep net here, and, and, and hopefully getting these fish onto this very tight inside. And that bait then will travel down. Some of it won't, you know, it won't hit the bottom. The maggots won't, certainly. The hemp will just help hold a few fish in this area. Um, but the maggots will float off and hopefully we'll catch some down the peg as well. And as I say, if the river keeps rising, it's not flying up at the moment, but it is rising into that bay behind. And for that, what I've set up is a... I've got an Avon float, okay, and this is a four gram Avon float. Um, you know, now if the river's going to get a bit messy, I could probably, you know, I perhaps could do with a, a heavier float. But again, talking about finesse and roach fishing, it's important for me not to go too heavy too early. I don't want a heavy float, you know, I don't want like a six, six gram bolo or something like that, you know, because with roach, you'll get those dips and you'll miss them or you'll start pulling out a fish, you know. So you don't want a heavy float that's too heavy. So I've got a four gram, four gram Avon on there. Um, you know, just a nice little shouldered bodied float. And then I've just got a simple bulk, bulk and two droppers. I've got my bulk of drill bullets there. And I've got two number eights. And those are actually stuck, hold, held together. And what I intend to do with this, I'll be running, I'll be sort of virtually casting it down the peg and then letting it draw in with the camera into that bay below and holding it there. It'll be a very, this will be a very static bait. And I say, I, ideally, I wouldn't want to pick this rig up. I want to catch on the running line. I want to catch on the, the, the strung out, spread out shots. Um, but I feel with conditions, you've got to be prepared to adapt. And I might be that if the conditions get too bad, I might have to put a heavier float on. Um, you know, sometimes taking that five minutes out just to change your rig. I've got rigs ready tied. Um, you know, that five minutes can, can keep you catching right throughout a session as, as conditions change. You've got to be adaptable. Um, but that's three rigs. Three rigs should cover what I want to do here. As I say, if I was fishing a match and, you know, I'd be covering all options, fishing out in the flow and ground bait and poles and all kinds of things, you know, that's match fishing. But this is just fishing, fishing for roach. I'm targeting, targeting them in an area and these three rigs should see that through. So my feeding for this, what I'm going to do, as I say, I don't want to pile a load of bait into the inside where I want to catch to start with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a good amount of hemp out in the flow a little bit. I'll probably put that sort of... You know, just so it's going to some some of this is going to hit the bottom and just create a bit of a bed, a feed, and then hopefully then we'll get them feeding on regular a regular trickle of bed. There we go, about a quarter of five hemp. So I'll just put a good amount in there, and then maggots just go as far upstream as I can get them. These aren't going to hit the bottom, but what these will do is help draw fish into the area. Now. This is the important part. I don't want to, as I say, I don't want to pile bait on the inside, but what I'm going to do, literally, is just trickle a little bit of hemp and a little bit of maggot, and I'm going to throw this right up here, virtually so it's coming alongside my keep net. 
and some of it will sink you know you see you've got different boils and you watch it as it goes down and some of it sinks down some of it sort of floats off you know and, and, and the key with this is regular you know, regular feeding um, because like I say not all of it will hit the bottom but if you're doing it regularly there's a trail going through and there'll be enough to keep these fish in this area sometimes if it's boiling up I'll even throw it at my feet there you know and let it go off the back of me keep now and some of it will get down but the more, the more regularly you feed the more you're creating that column of bait and attracting those fish into this inside I say it's just a few you don't want to go at it too hard even though you know I say this river we've got a reputation for feeding lots of bait and it's been very aggressive with our feeding but it's not required in this instance you can be aggressive out there like I say out there we're gonna be putting a you know a decent handful of hemp decent handful of maggots you could be grain baiting out there as well but you know on this inside just a trickle regular trickle of bait and I and say I'll, I'll let them you know I want to fish out away from it for an hour let them get used to that sort of trickle of bait there so I'm going to start on my stick float rig and I say all I need to fish you know there's no there's no bleak up here this time of year or anything like that to worry about so all I'm going to do is just fish a, uh, a single red maggot and literally it's just a case of just you know such easy fishing you're just letting it run off the rod tip really a horrible bait stream but which again you know it, it, it helps the fact we're not fishing far out I've got real good control there I can run that down it's a lovely fish in a 13 foot rod as well there we go so I'm just running that through and I can run this right down the peg all the time and I say even just halfway through a cast just drop a few maggots at your feet create that trail of bait So literally it's so easy this thing you don't even need to cast you just literally just lay it lay it there run it off the rod tip a little bit of hemp a little bit of maggot a little bit of your feet i say it's quite you know when, when you do start fishing the inside here it's quite hard you know sometimes it's even a 13 foot rod it's too it's too long you want to run it right right in here that's why sometimes the pole can, you know, a little shorter width can be a bit better. So we've got, we've got a horrible downstream wind today, but it's, um, and I say we, I think we're going to get some rain in a bit, and there's a storm coming in tonight, but let's see what we can, see if we can make the most of the good conditions. So I'm just going to draw that in a little bit closer that time. So I'm still not on my, the line where I think I'll catch the most. I'm just sort of just giving myself a starting point. This really is a lovely peg as well. I haven't drawn this peg in a match for many years, but when there's a few roach and dace around, it's just a lovely peg to fish. It doesn't take too much to get bites and you know, quite often decent fish here as well. I'd like to think today we might see a few bigger roach, but generally this time of year, I don't mind what size they are. It's just nice to catch some roach. So that's run to the bottom of the peg there gone under just dragged on the bottom there and that's you know that's what i'd expect early doors i'd expect to bite right at the bottom of the peg because we're loose feeding you know that bait won't be getting to the bottom again just not too far out at all hemp maggots There we go, the fish, that's a roach, I can tell straight away, just tell we roach, they come and then it's just that little dig dink, they just nod their head, not a big fish I don't think, I think well, it's not bad, I'm going to put the net under it, as soon as it's our first fish, lovely.
So that's what we came for. Classic roach trick, the hook's gone through the, into the net and through the mouth. There we go, that's sorted out. So there you go, that's what we came for. Fin perfect, fin perfect red fin. What's that, it's gonna be eight ounces. And there'll be loads of those about, hopefully. So that's a start. So that's taken 20 minutes to get a bite. But when we did it, it was our target species. And all the time, you know, I'm, I've not fished the area of the peg that I really think is going to be our hot spot. But I'm just keeping that column, columns of bait going in all the time. Get fish, get those roach sat there, used to it, running past their nose and feeding on it. Again, it's just literally, you know, I'm fishing very close, very close to the line I want to fish, but not, you know, not on it. I'm running past it, really. Just checking it as it goes down. And that one, as you'd expect, was, you know, was right down the peg. Hopefully, as things progress, they'll come higher up. You see the river starts to change a little bit. You see the odd, odd boil appearing where there wasn't before, so it's... You know, it's going to be tricky to keep fish coming in these conditions because obviously the flow's changing all the time. And that's why, you know, sometimes fishing tight to the bank is, is so much better in these conditions because at least you know, you know exactly where your hook bait's running and you know the fish will be there. That's about the spot where it was last time I went under. Nothing that time. Again, it's just so so simple fishing. You literally just wind it back, drop the rig down, no casting, feed everything by hand. Not feeding vast amounts of bait, just plenty, you know, just regular bait. That boil's changed now and that just runs through there lovely. That's just running off off the where that little point of grass is there. Running past the bay, you know, where I feel like the fish will pull into later on, but at the moment I'm running the flow past it. the rod tip feeding all the time even now I'm encouraging it a bit tighter in oh there we go that was nice if that's a roach or not. Feels more dace like that does. It's a bit of a roach, just a lively one. I'm gonna swing that one, I'm gonna be brave. Perfect. How's about that? So that was a lot higher up the peg that time. So they're obviously moving on to that loose feed now. Again, single red maggot. Again, just literally just dropping it off the rod tip. Bit of hemp, bit of maggot upstream, bit of maggot by my feet, a little bit of hemp lower down, and we're up and running. Oh, that's nice. That was just past the bay then, just as it was starting to slow up, and I just held it, and it just creeped in, crept in towards the bay. Smaller that time, but again, 
absolutely beautiful. Maggot's okay, so it goes straight back out. Quite often find that with single maggot, you get away with a lot more. You can catch a couple of fish on a maggot, you know, whereas a couple of maggots, usually one one will burst or mark up. And Boiling up a bit then, so was right in the slot that was. Now if you're looking at this from a fishing point of view, you know, just fishing, roach fishing, stick float, it don't get any better than this to be honest. I've had days where I've caught bigger roach but you know that's that fish there's somewhere between 12 ounces and a pound. You know for me River fishing doesn't get any better than that. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you could give me one method and one species for the rest of my life, it would be stick float fishing for roach like that. Now, from a match fishing point of view, obviously, you know, you're always looking for how you can be quicker you know is there 
a quicker way of catching and you might you know you might be fishing with grain bait trying to nail them over grain bait and catching them on a short pole or there's many ways you can do it you know when it, many ways and sometimes you are faced with those quandaries in matches um you know do you which species do you go for but i have to say that the, the, the days when i've targeted roach you know you, you start cat and catching them and, and especially when you catch them close in and, and you can nail them in one spot um you know it doesn't matter that you're not catching as quick as someone on polled hand you're just catching and you're catching quick uh, you know you're catching a, a decent fish every cast and it's um you're putting a weight together well the river's changed again now it's coming up quite fast now and uh, the river's really boiling up and although this stick float isn't flying through at a pace that I wouldn't expect to get bites on it's the boils really that's spoiling it and it's it's almost pulling it it's trying to pull it out into the flow and um, you know I want to be holding it as tight to the edge as I can really and it's pulling it out I'm still getting an odd bite but I think it's time to change to the Avon rig so I can just hold it in place you know, just hold it where I want it to go, uh, knowing that my bait's down. A bit more bold, a bit more positive. And just, you know, just changing to conditions. I still feel that there's still fish there, still feeding fish there. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm still confident we'll get bites, but now the rig isn't isn't behaving how I'd like it to. Well, there you go, there's a fish there. There is still odd fish there, but I just don't feel I'm not getting the I'm not getting the key with this for me is is keeping everything uniform. So every every cast is running down virtually on the same line. Your bait's going in the same place, and that's how you put you know numbers of fish together. And what I'm finding now that's the first fish I've had for probably ten runs through. So though I can still get bites, I don't feel it's as regular as it should be. So. I'm going to change. Okay, so switch this Avon now. And this really now is about getting it into position. I know where the fish are from where we've been getting the bites on the stick float. I know where they're happy, you know, where we've been getting our bites. And it's exactly the same now. It's just a case of just getting it into position and holding it there. Um, so, let's say my bait, you know, with the, with the, you know, with the bulk rig, obviously your bait's going straight down going straight down to where you want. I've got I'm fishing this over depth as well and I might even overshot it in a minute. So, you know I've got it dotted down nicely but I might even put an extra AA or even a swan shot on there just to hold it just to give me that bit of extra hold just to hold it exactly where I want it. That was the spot. Let's see. Fishing you know I've got a 14 on here and double maggot I might might even put a treble on now you know bigger bait because the river's starting to colour up now so I've got to give these fish a a bait they can find and that's coming into that bay now where I thought might be the place earlier on there is some snags down there though I did every time I ventured into there I have snagged up so it's not ideal but let's again just drop it in same line same feed everything's the same and just ease it through Right, so yeah, run it off the rod tip here. Yes, the river is on on the change now, it's really not very nice. That 
that's nice there now it's just holding where I want it just creeping back into that bay That's where you'd expect them to be now, as it, as it comes a bit. This time it's just floats holding it down. The the bulk's just holding the float down a bit better. And we're getting bites again. So again, just off the rod pit. That's it. Just let it just come in on the inside. That's the spot. Every now and again you get a, a boil catches a float and it just sends it on its side, it's absolutely horrible. Though, getting bites, it's uh, you know, that's sort of probably th that's three bites in four casts. That's, you know, it's it's you know, whereas before I caught one fish in one fish in ten casts, now it's I feel like I'm gonna get a bite every cast again. Now. Same again, half the rod tip. Same size fish, you know, same, they're in the same place. They're sat where the loose feeds land and it's just the upper, you know, the boils in the top part of the water have, have made the stick float ineffective. So we've changed and we're back into fish. Dace. Like Dace have come to have a look now, but it's all bites. And as, as forecast, the rain's starting now, and I don't think the day will get any better, so I don't think we'll be long now. We'll just see if we can finish off on a strong run on this Avon float. And We've had a brilliant day, whatever. Well, this feels like a decent roach. I think we're going to have to call this a day because the water's now over my keep net. It's about to go over my wellies, and if I sit here long enough, it'll be over my box. So I think we'll end on that fish. Not the biggest fish we've had today, but 
an absolute quality roach in prime condition which I for one will never get tired of catching fish like that fin perfect and just goes to show what can you know what you can catch at very close quarters you know that was within a foot of the bank here and it's been an interesting day you know of changing conditions we've ended up on the on on the Avon rig because we've had to you know conditions have dictated that but for me strung out rigs presentation key for roach and uh, they'll always be my first sort of port of call so I hope you've learned a bit from this and I hope you can take this away and use it on other venues and um, like I say we'll keep the videos coming we've got more lots more planned please hit subscribe um, you know we're building a good fan base now and that just helps us produce more and more videos and um, we'll see you next time